We're Trent and Allie, and our first home together was a van. For almost three years, we traveled North and South America, visiting 16 countries, meeting hundreds of amazing people, and exploring the world, one gas tank at a time. It's been one year since we had to abandon our van in Argentina, and today, we're reconnecting with our old friend. What's up guys and welcome back. Today we're doing something a little bit different than a lot of you are probably used to. Most of you guys probably didn't follow us when we lived in a van. But Allie and I used to live in this van, Pamela Vanderson, who traveled all the way to the bottom of South America and this was like our only house. It was all we had. And today we're getting back to our roots and we can't wait to take you guys along for the ride. Oh, just take a quick trip into the grocery store. And now we're completely loaded up with stuff. We're mostly loaded up with Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I haven't seen Girl Scout cookies in such a long time. Like, they don't sell them back here. I feel like last anymore. time they had them. We got so was, many. <laughs> they like COVID canceled it, or maybe we were in South America. I don't remember. So now that we have a million groceries, it's so weird because, like, Taking a trip in the van is just so much different than like living in the van. One, I'm like extremely stressed because I'm like, oh, what if we forgot something? What if we don't have this? What if we don't have that? Yeah. And like when you live in the van, you just have everything with you. There's no leaving anything behind. So yeah. like it's a totally different adventure than just like taking a trip in the van. And we're going for the weekend. I think now that we have gotten all this stuff from the grocery store, we have everything we need. Now we just have to drive four hours and the sun just went down. Wish us luck. When did the last spark fly? We made it. I am super exhausted. I'm like just drove and drove and drove. We finally made it to Moab. We just pulled into a nice little campsite. I thought we were level. <laughs> we're not and level. We're not <laughs> level at all. We're doing like the tilt a whirl in here. It's been a long drive and I'm so excited to unpack everything, to get situated and organized. I think we're gonna get this van level get everything ready, go to sleep, and we'll see you guys in the morning. Nothing to bring back a bunch of memories in the van, like whipping up a nice delicious latte in the morning and just waking up and just feeling at home. The van like That's was so our true. home for so long that like no matter where we woke up, we felt like we were home. Even when we were in different countries, it's just like a very, it's a very unique feeling. I'm just excited to be able to sit here, kick back and relax and drink my morning latte. Allie is at it again with the extra crispy bacon and she's got a couple eggs on the grill. I'm just so happy to be here right now. It feels amazing to be in the van. The last time we were in the van, we drove from Utah to DC for Christmas and that wasn't like a fun van adventure. That was just like get from point A to point B and drive as long as and as fast as you can. And now we're just here to relax. There's no schedule. There's no itinerary. It's just make bacon and see if Trent likes it. <laughs> <laughs> really, we're just here to have fun and that's like the only thing on the agenda. However, as soon as we get done eating breakfast, I cannot wait to get out on the bikes because we rode our bikes one time this last year. And that's just not enough. So this year we're gonna make time to ride the bikes more. And today is day number one, which will probably be rather painful, but I think we're gonna have fun. And I know a lot of you guys are probably concerned with the fact that we share our lives online and we're building a cabin in the mountains. And basically right now, everybody knows we're not home. 
But don't worry, we're safe because of Simply Safe, who's the sponsor of today's video. Simply Safe has been the easiest security system I have ever used in my life. Setting it up was a breeze. You basically unpack all of the sensors, all of the devices communicate with the home base, which is plugged in. Simply Safe on. You have everything that you need. Please exit now. My favorite feature is actually the camera. No matter where we are, I can log in on my phone, I can check the camera, and I can see exactly what's going on inside Terry at any given time. And it's not just a noisemaker. The monitoring system will actually call the police if it's alerted to any of the sensors being tripped. It gives us a lot of peace of mind knowing that no matter where we are, we can not only check on our house, but that our house is safe because of Simply Safe. So if you're interested in trying out Simply Safe, click the link in our description to check out their award-winning home security system. System. Thanks again to Simply Safe for sponsoring today's video. Now we are gonna get back on the road. I think everything is packed up and tucked away, but honestly, we used to have this system down really seamlessly so that I knew what needed to be like locked up before driving. And I have forgotten a lot about how to van life. It's crazy <laughs> what one year outside of the van can do to you. I think everything is good to go. We are gonna head on down to a little place called the Mag 7 Trail System. We haven't biked in a long time. We need something easy to like warm up with. And, and this is a really nice, variety of trails at this at this location and we're gonna take Frank and so yeah. Frank can't do like Insane super long super gnarly stuff. Yeah. So he's usually only good for like a couple miles And then we got to take him back to the van. So. Let's face it. We're in worse shape than Frank <laughs> <laughs> So we need something easy <laughs> All right, well on the road again I know. Grab your car keys and jacket cuz honey we're ready to go Well, we're ready to go. I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie, we came down here to Moab because it was supposed to be really nice weather, really sunny, really warm, and it's a uh, balmy 52 degrees, maybe windy, and now it's cloudy. So I'm cold. I know <laughs> Allie's gonna be cold, but uh, Frank's ready to go, so we're gonna hop on the bikes and let's hit the trail. Frank, are you ready? Are you ready to go for a ride? Okay. I'd love to talk to you right now, but I have to breathe first. <laughs> the important thing about mountain biking is momentum and speed is your friend. So even though it's scary, you use that speed to dig into turns and to go uphill when you have a little bit of momentum. If you lose that momentum, the easy uphill sections become very difficult. <laughs> That's what I'm dealing with right now. <laughs> Yeah, there's some uh, parts on here that are a little intimidating. Yeah, it's fun. We're just diving right back into the deep end. Here. Yeah. So much for taking it, Mala, today. Yeah. So right here is a little land bridge. You can take the option to ride your bike out and over that bridge, but it's a several hundred foot fall on the other side, so I won't be doing that today. Number two. Oh, nice. Oh, I've missed this so much. You have no idea how good it feels to get out on the bike, to be out in nature. Not that I don't love building our house. 
but some days you just need a break. And I know Frank is just loving this. <laughs> All right, we just made it to the bottom of Bull Run, which was an awesome little black diamond trail and we had, we had a blast. It was really fun. And when we used to mountain bike all the time, I used to ride the, the toughest and hardest trails that we could find. Trent and used would... to race, actually. Trent's an enduro mountain bike racer. Only a little bit. So he's very familiar with the most technical, <laughs> the gnarliest downhill terrain, going up and down, because enduro, you have to ride uphill also. Me, on the other hand, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> so when I started this channel, it was intended to only be a mountain biking channel. That's all it was, was me wearing a chest mount GoPro with a friend or with Allie, and we were just trying to make awesome videos about mountain biking. You guys and might remember. And it did not work out so well. You might remember the old name of our channel was TNT MTB, and that stood for Trent and Tony Mountain Biking. It's a great name, I know. And, uh, we love Tony. Tony, we love you. But he broke his <laughs> collarbone on like our second on their second ride in. Yeah. And Trent was like, Allie, you have to be part of this channel. And that's literally how we got to where we are right now. Yeah. And it just kind of the channel transitioned into what it is now is us building our house. So it's crazy though, because this really feels like us getting back to our roots. Yeah. Like this is how we started. This is what we love doing. This is like our whole relationship started mountain biking together. Yeah. It's really fun to do this. It's like, a, it's like a little walk through the desert with an old friend. <laughs> well, even though that was a lot of fun, this is the type of trail that I don't actually like that much. And it's one where you start at the top, you descend and you have all the fun, and then you have to do like the pain of climbing all the way back up to the top to get back to your vehicle. And we're at the bottom right now. So we're on cloud nine, we just had a blast. And now we basically have an insane workout to get back to the van. Wish us luck. One thing that I have entirely forgotten about mountain biking is how much it hurts your butt. And it's not like, hold on. It's not like your tailbone or your butt cheeks. It's literally like your two hip bones like the hip the bottom of your hip bones where they come out by your butt just rest on the seat and they rock back and forth and it makes the skin raw and it makes the tissue sore it's just my butt is killing me right now Are you wearing a chamois? i'm wearing a chamois yeah. and it's just not doing anything Are you ready? You're cute and you're like behaving really well. It's just that you're yipping, but we don't like that. He's so excited. We don't yip in this family. Frank used to mountain bike with us all the time. Like every time we went mountain biking, we would take Frank and it was like one of the ways that we exercised Frank. Frank is like super out of shape with mountain biking, but he's chomping at the bit, ready to go, yipping and hollering and he's definitely having the most fun out of everybody. Was quite the bike ride. I had a great time. Now I feel like I'm ready for a nap, but I'm also starving. Frank is completely pooped. I think it's probably time for some food, don't you? Okay, well, we've got a bunch of Girl Scout cookies and a loaf of bread. Mmm. I'll eat both. Perfect. Oh, these are what I thought. Yeah, I told you. We had you. a huge debate about what are tag alongs because I thought they were the butter cookies with like the peanut butter in the middle. That's what a tag along is it's chocolate covered butter cookie with peanut butter and they're delicious. There's a lot of uh, loyalty to certain Girl Scout cookie types. These are good, good choice. So I don't know why Allie would doubt me when it comes to cookies <laughs> and like how I wouldn't know what's good and what's not good. And I want you guys to let us know in the comments, what is your favorite Girl Scout cookie? And I think like the vast majority of the public are gonna say Thin Mints. Oh yeah, which frozen. I'm, I'm a huge Thin Mint guy. What I actually really love is some vanilla ice cream, mm. some Thin Mints, some milk in the blender. Boop. Really, really good. You guys should try it. I'm not even surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make sandwiches. <laughs> You're just gonna fall asleep with a cookie in your hand? This is the most Trent thing I've ever seen. <laughs> mm. 
It's a good cookie. <laughs> Frank's like, hey man, you should eat that or you should let me eat it. Probably just waiting until I fell asleep and he was going to try to snatch it. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Frank's pooped. I'm pooped. Allie's pooped, but she'll probably say she's not. <laughs> we're going to we're going to nap and, and just take it easy the rest of the day. What's up guys? I know the last time that we left you, we were just getting ready to take a nap and uh, that was yesterday. We actually ended up putting down the camera and didn't pick it up, just laid around for the rest of the day and then slept all night. And now I've woken up in the morning. I feel absolutely incredible. We have some really crazy plans today. And Allie just ran into the store to grab us a couple bits and bobs to prepare for our adventure today. She's also grabbing us some coffee in there because we've got some problems. The water pump had been making some funny noises, which I just thought, yeah, it's old, there's issues, I don't know, it went to South America. I'm not really exactly sure what's going on with it, but it has ceased operating as of last night. So we have no running water. Now, I was thinking ahead, we had a spare water pump with us in South America in case this happened when we were down there. When we cleaned out the van, I found the spare water pump and I was like, oh, we probably don't need that. And I was like, well, I better just throw it in there just in case. So we have a spare water pump with us and I actually have a handful of tools. With the small amount of tools I have, I should be able to swap the water pump out. But first, I think you guys are gonna like this today. We're gonna have a lot of fun. our water not working at all which is a little bit frustrating since we've never had this problem ever before but we're also late for an appointment and it's an appointment I'm a little nervous about I've never done this before it's a very common thing to do in Moab you see it all the time and to me it seems extremely death defying so we'll see how this goes This T-handle right here is your best friend. That is, you want to hold on to that as tight as you can, and if we're gonna roll over, you're gonna to want to put your head in between your knees. Okay. Like please, that. Please don't roll us over. Maybe just once. Please. <laughs> <laughs> we can't afford to roll this thing over. So, we are getting ready to start Hell's Revenge right now. I think we are ready. Should we grab some snacks? Oh, they're right there. I'm too nervous to eat. <laughs> you can eat. <laughs> All right, well, let's kick her into four-wheel drive. <laughs> Put it in low range. Here we go. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Your face, what are you doing? <laughs> this is really scary. <laughs> so this is the easiest obstacle. It's the very first one. Are you serious? Yeah. Look down there. No. <laughs> oh, now we gotta go get Oh, treads. Funny to you. <laughs> I honestly think Trent's favorite thing in life is just trying to get me out of 
husband that's driving, it just feels like there's a lot more room for error and a lot less trusting. That's just a really long-winded way of saying, I don't trust my husband. <laughs> out of the way and we've had a little bit of fun and Allie's kind of seen what she's in for she's taking the wheel Woo. are you ready for this are you ready for this <laughs> I'm more scared now than Allie was it's so cool because we biked the slick rock trail that parallels Hell's Revenge so I've seen people on this before and I've always been like wow those guys are crazy <laughs> this is super fun actually all right, so just come over here and where that yellow diamond is, you just want to put the center of the vehicle directly over that diamond. She's driving by herself. I'm gonna get out and spot her so she doesn't tip over or anything bad. Well, we've made it a little ways in and now we're actually to one of the river overlook or lookout points. Check out this view. Over there in the distance is Arches National Park, the delicate arch and all the like famous arches in Utah. They're all just kind of right over the hill over there. It's so crazy to me that like, this is just three or four hours away from Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. And like from where we live up at 8,000 feet where there's four feet of snow right now and it's freezing and you come down here and it's not hot, but there's no snow, it's super dry and it's pretty temperate. It's so incredible, <laughs> like the difference, the variety of landscapes just in one state. Yeah, Utah is extremely diverse with the nature and the different types of terrain and things that you can get into. It's my favorite state. I have a biased opinion though. <laughs>
We just made it out. We're alive. We're alive. We did it. I mean, I, w I wouldn't say I would like do it again <laughs> necessarily. Yes, you would. <laughs> no, it's fun. It's cool. And like, um, these trails are like not manicured, but they're very like specific. You can't go off trail. You can't destroy nature. Like they're designated four by four trails. So it's not like you can go do this just anywhere you want. That would be illegal. And I cannot believe that those obstacles are allowed for anyone to drive on. <laughs> I think we're going to head back, rescue Frank and just relax for the rest of the afternoon. When was the last real kiss? When did it turn from that to this? When and now that we're back in the van, we got two missions today. <laughs> One, fix this lousy water pump. Probably the biggest issue that we have is I'm an idiot, and when I set up the water system, I didn't put a drain in the water system. Oh. So like, the water tank's full, the water lines are full. As soon as I go to unscrew that water pump, water's gonna start going everywhere. And like, we're gonna pack some towels in there, and hopefully I can just do like the Rocky Mountain quick step and like, doop, 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 doop. Just change them really quick. If not, we are in big, big trouble. We'll just put it that way. Cool. So we're gonna go try and find a place to park where we can swap this water pump and then after that I think we're gonna try and find a nice little campsite. It's funny we haven't had any real trips in the van since we got it back from South America and what we're about to do feels very much like we're still in South America which is just working on the van trying to fix repairs. It's gonna be fun okay? <laughs> oh yeah? I just have to crawl into this tiny cavity, remove a board, disassemble the water lines and take the water pump out and what about that doesn't sound easy. <laughs> this is the water pump. Actually, this is our dirty clothes storage for anybody interested. That's where our hamper. That's our hamper. That's my husband. Where? <laughs> this is the electrical. Right next to the water. I wonder if I... Who designed it that way? Who designed this? That is the <laughs> best question ever. <laughs> the problem with this is that I really don't want to, and I pretty much can't remove the inverter right now because of the things that are plugged into it. And I can't reach the actual like screws that are holding it down or else I would just take those out, lift this up, and then I'd have access to swap this out. And I like can't get the drill in here oh, no. to loosen the two screws that hold on the water pump. I don't know how to get this out. Who? Oh. Isn't gonna work. I'm like an inch short. If I just had one more of these, of either any of these fittings, if I just had one more, I could do it, but I, I can't. We bought some gallon jugs this morning when we realized the water pump wasn't working and we're gonna rough it. We're gonna be full van dwelling, desert dweller people, and we're gonna go find a campsite. I think we're like 10 or 12 days or something from the anniversary of having to abandon our van in Argentina. Wow. So this, this water pump did make it another year. Yeah. It only got used like five times in the last year. That's probably why it went out is because it would like got used all day every day for you know three years and then all of a sudden it sat for a year. Do you think we'll ever travel in the van again? We're traveling in the van right now. Like a big trip? I think so. You think so? Yeah. Good. I hope so. Yeah, me too. What are you making? Pasta. Our go-to pasta. Hey, darling. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling. We could get out of town. See the beautiful world around. What a team you are. Thank you, my love. Pack our bags and get in that car. Leave a little note. 
really dirty. I wish we had running water so that we could take a shower, but that's just not in the cards right now. That's the okay. food was absolutely delicious oh, though. I'm good. Like, so full, I think I'm gonna pop. You don't have any room for Girl Scout cookies? <sighs> I can't even breathe deep. <laughs> I like, have labored breathing because my stomach is so full of food. It's a metaphor for this whole weekend. I feel like I just like bit off so much this whole weekend and had so much fun, I like can't even process it. It was nice, it was really nice to get away, to mountain bike again, and to just be back in the van. It was so nice to be back in the van. Yeah, it feels so familiar and so homey and yeah. fun and it, like it's just, it's interlaced with adventures. Yeah. I just, I've had such a blast this weekend and unfortunately tomorrow we gotta go home and go Back to, work. to reality. So I hope you guys enjoyed coming along on this adventure with us, heading into the desert to have fun in the sun. If you guys did, make sure you show us by giving us a big thumbs up on today's video. Consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you guys on the next Adios. one. Adios. Hey, darling. I love it when it's me and you. Love it when it's me and you. On the road with a couple of tunes in a car for two. Hey, darling.